Hey guys, welcome back to PyMonk Basics. So in this video, we're gonna go off of the video I had just posted, which was the bouncing ball with image. And I'm gonna give you guys some organizational tips for your scripts and your games when we're integrating PyMonk and Pygame. And as you can tell, this is starting to get a little messy. So I thought it'd be a good time to start that now. So the first thing I like to do is I like to make every object that we have its own class. So for instance, right now, if I run this, we have two objects. We've got, give me one sec. We've got the ball and we've got the segment. So the first object that we're going to create into a class is gonna be the ball. So I'll say class ball. And I like to capitalize my class names and we'll see why later. And for every class, we're gonna need an init method. Right. And by the way, if you don't have a good grounding on object oriented programming, uh, there are other tutorials on YouTube that are great for that. I may get to do my own eventually, but uh, this is going to assume that you do have a decent grounding on at least the basics of object oriented programming in Python. So in it and then we'll bring in self. Now, what do we want within our in it arguments? It's going to be whatever is going to be different for every instance of this class that we're going to have. Right now, we only have one ball. So we just have uh, no arguments to the init method because there's only going to be one instance. And so I have some important uh, attributes here. So one that every, every ball is going to have is going to be its own body, right? And that's going to be, and actually maybe I'll use some magic of copy and paste here. And I'll, I'll just go ahead and explain it as I do it. But so I'm copying and pasting all of the attributes, excuse me, and space.add, copy and pasting all the attributes of the ball class that I would want, um, which all came from things I was doing with the ball object. So as you see I'm doing here is I'm moving a fixed variable such as ball radius. Uh, you can keep it outside the class. You can keep it as a class variable within here. It's going to be up to you, um, but I'll just keep it global. And so the things we need within the edit method here, uh, a body, so a self dot body. We'll need a, to set the position, of course, we'll need a self dot shape. And you see I'm making these all attributes of the ball class. And then I can set everything I want of these things within the init method. Of course, if I felt like I was going to change the density a lot, the elasticity a lot, I can make it into a variable, which I'd like to do out here, unless it needs to be different for each uh, um, object, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, and then always, always, always self.body here. Always, always add the body and shape to the space. So to review, we have a class, which is going to represent our object. We're going to have an init method for it. We're going to... I need to make a self.body, self.shape. We're going to set its position and do all of these things that we want to do within here. Anything that would be different for every instance of this class, we will have as an argument up here. But the benefit of this is, is I can create another method called draw, bring in self. And then everything that I do here for drawing this ball will be within this method. draw. So remember, I have this circle that I'm not actually drawing, but I'd just like to keep it there in case I need to troubleshoot. And uh, oh, the x and y, that's right. x and y is going to be this. And remember that the body is going to be self.body, right? So this is kind of how I like to organize my PyMonk objects. Now let's do the same for the segment. So class, I guess uh, floor, I'll do floor. And we want a uh, define in it self, and sorry for the messiness here, but here we go. Then I'll go self.body, and I don't even have to say segment body, I'm just gonna say self.body, right? Because there's no chance of reusing the name from a different class now self.shape self.shape then the rest of these can also become self.shape 
And again, there's only one floor, so we don't really need any arguments with the init method. So let's see what's going on here. So yeah, it's not segment body anymore. We've changed it to self.body. And same thing here, not segment shape anymore, self.shape. So again, to review, we every time we're creating an object, we're going to create it as a class. We're going to get an init method with arguments that are what it's going to be different every time we create an instance of this. And then everything we want to do with that to initialize, we're going to do in the in the init method. Uh, and also anything we need up here, which is going to be outside the class, is going to be our variables that we are going to be changing a lot. And so, or they're pertinent to that object as well. So for instance, this image is pertinent to the ball. So I like to keep this right above where I've defined the, the ball class. So that's kind of the organization that I'm looking at. And this needs ball radius. So actually we'll need to do this. So this is kind of the organization that I'm looking at right now. Now, let's see what we would do in regards to creating instances of this class. I like to do it up here. Right after I start the game function, I create a lowercase ball. So this is why it's important that this is a capital B ball, but I always create my instances as lower cases within here. So ball is ball. So I've created an instance of the ball. And since again, there's no arguments to the init method, I don't have to have any arguments to this uh, call of the, um, the class, the, the initialization of the class. Then I'll have a floor. So floor equals floor. And within here now, oh, I need to make a draw method for the floor. So I can say define draw self and I have its draw method. Now I've created these instances and within here, after I display my background, I can just say ball.draw. And anytime, anytime I wanna change the way the ball is drawn, I don't have to change anything within this loop anymore. Floor.draw, I just change it within the class. So we're sort of abstracting out the ideas of these objects and trying to look at the game loop a little less. So anytime I need anything about these things, I can do it here. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit to make it a little easier to follow the entire script. Hopefully the video can still see all this. But so everything here, it has to do with the ball. Everything here has to do with the floor. And I can even create a little more white space between them. And before that is all our initialization stuff and any relevant functions we need. So let's run this and make sure we haven't messed anything up. We have not. So one of the advantages of abstracting out the idea of the objects into classes is I can create multiple very, very easily. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll create a ball two equals ball. And so I'm creating a new ball here. And then all I have to do is just say, draw it, ball two dot draw. Just have to do these two things, create the instance and within the game loop tell it to draw. And I can go ahead and run this and there will be two balls. And you can see that they even separated from each other because the physics engine recognized they were on top of each other. So they sort of spread them out, right? Because physics can't happen on top of each other and they bounce off of each other too, which is really cool. Um, but let's say I want to start them at two different positions. So to do that, now we have something different between the two classes of balls, right? Or the two instances, excuse me, of the ball class. So in the init, we'll say, uh, I'll say X because I want the X to be a little different. And instead of 400, we can say X here. And again, I can set like a, a default value. So let's say if I don't want to say anything here, then uh, it'll be 400. So for this one, I'll keep it at 400, right? I could also write 400, but because I've created this default value, I don't have to say 400. But this one, I'll do 200. So I'll go ahead and run this. And now we have one ball on one side and one on the other side. So we can create multiple balls, multiple floors the same way. But by organizing this, now we're giving ourselves an opportunity to make more objects um, and keep it organized as well.